Hi, I'm George Howell from the George Howell Coffee Company, and I'm here now to talk about brewing drip manually uh, and really how to achieve the best possible cup of coffee. So we're going to start with uh, these, what are called Hario V60s. There are many different filter tops that you can use, uh, including cloth filters called a sock, uh, and uh, including metal filters or ones using plastic. If I can pull this out, here we go, like this, uh, or using paper. And uh, just let me mention, if you use something that allows fine sediment to go through, like a metal filter or with uh, some kind of plastic, you, uh, you are achieving, uh, you're getting more, a different kind of body, in essence. Some fine sediment is running through, and that will coat your mouth and give you a sense, a chewier sense of the coffee. Uh, but you will potentially be sacrificing grasping the body that it has through its oils uh, that tend to coat your mouth in a different way. Uh, paper filter, again, is a clearer cup of coffee, uh, much like a, uh, a, a wine. When you pour it, you can see right through it there is no sediment. When you go to the bottom of a uh, f unfiltered wine and you get that cloudiness, you get a cloudy note in, in your coffee. It is really personal preference, whichever way you want to go. So uh, the key element to begin with that you really need is great water. Uh, you can talk about the coffee and everything else. If you don't have great water, you're, you're through right there. So one way to do it is some kind of spring water that really tastes fresh and, and clean and, and bright. Uh, another way is to filter your water. And there are many brands out there now uh, that will allow you to do that. Uh, you never want to use distilled water. There has to be a certain amount of minerals, not too much, in the, co in the water to get the right chemical reactions. The, the other thing that you need is the right temperature of that water. And the water should be right around 201 degrees. Minimum, minimum is 195, maximum 205. But somewhere in there, we think that 201 is absolutely perfect. The other thing you're going to need is turbulence, some amount of moving the, uh, the water with the grounds to make sure all the grounds are evenly extracted. Uh, and, and then you're really off on the right foot going forward. So first step is I'm going to take a paper filter. And they can be brown or white. Uh, brown, I think, has a little bit more flavor if you're not going to rinse it, but I highly recommend that. And you're going to take this edge that you see here where the paper has been brought together, fold it like so over, and now you're going to place it in the, in the filter top like so. And then the first step is going to be rinsing that paper filter because if you put the grounds in and you pour, you're going to get very much of a paper taste, no matter what paper filter you use. And believe me, it actually does affect the flavor of the coffee. Now that our filter is prepped, we need to weigh the coffee very precisely to get the right amount uh, to brew 12 fluid ounces of coffee. Uh, you could do this using uh, four tablespoons flat of, uh, of coffee as well, and uh, then you would use about almost 14 fluid ounces of hot water. Some of that's going to get absorbed by the coffee grounds, and you're going to be left over with 12 liquid ounces of actual coffee beverage from there. So you can go that route, but it will not be as accurate uh, as if you were to go with grams, which is the way we're going to do it now. So the first step is I'm going to place my glass here, and I'm going to tear the glass like so, so it reaches zero. And I'm going to put in 24 plus a little bit more in case a little bit gets stuck in here, like 25, 26 grams. That's a couple of beans more, if you will. So no, no great waste. And uh, I go here. This is fun watching this upside down, but hey, I've done more difficult things in my life. 25. 
and that should do it. All right, a little bit, uh, 25 plus, and I'm going to put this in the grinder. Now, this is a burr grinder that you have here. You could be using as well a blade grinder that is much smaller, much less expensive. The problem is that a blade grinder cuts everything without any discrimination at all. And so you're going to get boulders and dust and a whole lot of everything in between. And this is going to mean that your dust immediately extracts, i.e. over extraction instantly, providing some rather bitterish taste. And the boulders aren't going to extract enough and then you're going to get stuff in between. You're going to get a mix. You're not going to get the perfect brew. When you grind coffee, the more every granule is identical, the better and the more even your results will be. You can't achieve that even in the most professional grinders, but the closer you get to that, the better. That's another reason why when you grind whatever you're doing, uh, even with a really great one like this machine, you want to go more coarse than is what normally recommended. Interestingly enough, when you grind finer, which a lot of companies like Melita in Europe and elsewhere recommend, and you will see this in specialty shops when they brew this way for you, uh, for speed's sake, the problem is that the finer the grind, the greater the percentage of actual dust that you're getting which is, again, over-extraction. The coarser, the smaller the percentage of that fine goes. But it means you need to brew for a little bit longer in order to get the extraction right. Uh, that's what we're going to do. It's a little bit on the coarse side. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to, it's already teared, so now I'm going to pour this in, and hopefully I can get my 24 grams. What do you know? And we got even 25. If I take a little bit of spoon here, and 25 would be fine, but it would be stronger than what I personally like, so I'm going for, for 24. Uh, I get rid of any grounds. This will never serve anything anymore. It will stale very quickly once it's ground. And uh, this I will now pour, uh, put in my filter top, like so, and shake this around a little bit to flatten the, the coffee down. I will also make a small hole in the center. It, uh, again, just from doing this a lot, it helps brew uh, a little bit better cup. And uh, we're going to tear this again because now we're going to add water, and we only want to weigh the water. So we're going to bring it down to zero. So we pour exactly 390 grams of very hot water, 201 degrees ideally, into this. So let me tear it back to zero. Now I'm going to get the hot water, and we're ready to go. So here we have the hot water at 201. It's basically a little bit below boiling. Boiling's at 212. So 201, 205, this is going to cool a little bit as I brew, so that's not a problem. Uh, you, you're starting at around 205, and it'll get down to 199 or something like that by the end. First thing, then, is to pre-wet my grounds, because fresh coffee has a lot of carbon dioxide to it. I need to expel a lot of that before continuing. Otherwise, you won't get a complete extraction. So uh, I should pour about 40 grams to 50 grams here, and uh, I just make sure I get all the grounds wet, and then I stop, like so. And uh, yeah, that's 41 grams, perfect. And uh, now I'm gonna wait approximately 20 to 30 seconds. What happens is here that a dome forms because it's fresh coffee, and that dome is because of all the carbon dioxide. If you get coffee that has been ground for you already at the supermarket in a bag and you don't see that dome emerge, that's a natural consequence of the fact that it simply wasn't fresh. You're not going to get what you really want from a fine cup, from a fine coffee, if you will. So after about 20 seconds, uh, you continue on the way. And uh, I'm going to start it now. 
and I'm going to be looking for about two and a half to two minutes and 40 seconds, if you will. And what I do is I pour in a circular fashion, and I pour idea, uh, mostly equidistant from the center uh, and equidistant from the edges of the, the, uh, the filter itself, a donut in a circular fashion. And I don't go over where that dome was. I don't pour all the way up or whatever because then I'm not extracting properly the coffee. So I, it's a kind of start-stop method that I do. And I will be looking for 390 grams. I'm already at 140 as I continue here. 390, 390 it is. Now we are ready to, uh, to taste this. And I pour, and I'm actually going to pour a tiny amount in because that cools the coffee because this allows me to really taste it right away. Uh, nice glass bottom to it, so I even swirl it. Smells really nice. This is a Sulawesi uh, from the region of uh, Tawarko. These are tiny farmers basically, that combine together and, uh, and, uh, and have this coffee mill together in a cooperative effort. Very sweet. Very nice. So try this out. It takes a probably doing it a few times. Uh, and uh, once you've got it, uh, I think you're going to be very happy with the results. And uh, it's just a matter of getting the routine down. Thank you.